salutations. So I am back with another edition. And as you can see, the title for this is To Sweat the Small Stuff. So in other words, these are going to be a few of the areas that most people skip over in the glorious House of Gaines. Um, that's Robert Frank 615's famous reference to the gym. So uh, I don't get uh, in trouble for gimmick infringement. You should also check out his channel. It's freaking awesome. But uh, he doesn't have Ivan. So uh, I think I got a leg up on him in that regard. So uh, first and foremost, I want you to think of basically every upper body exercises and a vast majority of lower body exercises. What do you have to do in order to push something, in order to pull something, in order to press something? You have to grip it. You have to take it in your hand and pull it or push it or whatever the case may be. So, since you have to grip it, it only seems, or one would think, it seems common sense to well, work on your grip. And yet most people do not. Uh, you can see that the vast majority of the people, they do not have... The vibrations are because Ivan is rubbing his face all over my little table here that I have the phone on, by the way. Or perhaps you are trembling with excitement at viewing this video because of the awesome information that it entails. I'm going to go with the latter. So, back to grip. Um, just from a cosmetic standpoint, you can look around and see how many people actually have even somewhat developed forearms. And that's a big indicator right there. So essentially, let's go with a uh, bench press. When I am doing a bench press and the weight is pushing down on my hand and on my wrist, uh, if my foundation here, and this is the first set of muscles to take on the strain of that weight, besides the small ones in the hand and whatnot. But really, this is the bridge between the wrist and the elbow. This can make a huge difference in terms of how well you're able to support and stabilize that weight. It's the first point of contact. So if you are not working that area, guess where that additional stress that should have been supported is going to go? It's going to transfer more onto your wrist more onto your elbow, possibly overload the triceps and the shoulder, and, excuse me, limit the ability to utilize the boobs, which is the whole point of the bench press anyways. Uh, for some people, it's the whole point of their gym existence, is to get the boobs bigger. Um, I'm talking to you, gym bros. So, uh, Obviously, you were able to work on that that grip. You're going to be able to stabilize a push more, and you're going to be able to deploy more of that force through the uh, chain of command, so to speak, and put more emphasis onto the chest and get a more efficient push. So, uh, essentially, you want to think of it the same way as a pull. When you are pull, say you're doing a, a pull down or or a pull up. If your grip starts to fail, I mean, that that emphasis, that exercise, the the motion, the force, it has to travel down all of this to to get to the lats, to get to the the back muscles. Of uh, depending on the grip and the width and whatever you're trying to work, it has to travel all the way through this whole chain. So if your grip's already crapping out, then you'll never see the full potential of your back because it's just not going to get enough force transferred onto it. You're, you're not gonna be able to, to grip long enough to exhaust those larger muscles and get the proper progress you want out of your back. So uh, work on your forearms, work on your grip. Uh, the wrist roller is a fantastic addition to any arm workout. Uh, for years, 
I would do a set for triceps, a set for biceps, and then I'd roll a wrist roller up and down uh, in each direction, towards me and away from me. Uh, it's fantastic for getting some grip strength, a lot of grip conditioning, which you're conditioning for your smaller muscles you're going to need because they have to play the supporting role for long periods of time. And of course, they have to get very good at transferring the force of whatever you're doing to the larger muscles. But uh, again, you have to work on your first point of, of contact, which people seem to miss. So all you're doing is putting additional strain on your joints and you're limiting the ability of your larger muscles to do the work which you want them to for your major movements. Uh, it's the same principle for your uh, calves. Uh, obviously, just from a cosmetic standpoint, uh, nobody wants to look like they got toothpicks sticking out of their shorts. Though, looking around a lot of gyms, you could, could, have, uh, could have fooled me in that regard. So, your, uh, your calves are arguably more important than, than your forearms and your grip because you're walking around all the time. You're, you're running, you're jumping, you're landing, you're doing a lot of major movements, squats, deadlifts, the basis for your cleans, your jerks. All of these things, they start with your feet on the ground, your ability to push off of your feet. And I don't know why I did this when I was talking about pushing off the feet, but um, probably because you can't see my feet, nor do you want to because they're long, flat, and smashed with uh, monkey toes and they look freakish and I can write with them which is probably a fact you didn't need to know but uh, now you can deal with that image in your heads. Anyways, so uh, you uh, are beginning all of these exercises, all these motions, all these everyday activities with your feet. Again the calves bridge the knee and the ankle support. So if you are working your calves, your ankle takes on extra pressure, your knee takes on extra pressure, um, and uh, even things such as your balance can be affected because obviously if there's no, not good stabilization and strength between your knee and your ankle, you uh, tend to get a wee bit more wibbly and wobbly. So, not only for cosmetic reasons, but also for your overall lower body ability in all aspects, uh, condition your calves. My, uh, my famous calf workout, which I did for years, I would strap a 100 pound plate to my waist and I would do calf raises up and down a flight of stairs uh, over and over and over again. Now, uh, in the absence of a 100 pound plate, or if you aren't really at that level, just maybe start with body weight or uh, a 25 pound plate, as long as you have a dip belt and a plate, you're, you're good to go. But this is just that high volume set after set after set after set after set, after, after set that conditions the calves to keep you balanced, to recover properly, to be that solid foundation. So just like with the chain along from the arm, from the forearms to the upper arms, to the shoulders, to the chest or the back muscles, you're going to be able to displace more force through the calves, onto the quads, onto the hamstrings, onto the glutes, uh, which really are your center power for all your big exercises, are the glutes. Learn how to use your glutes and your hips right for squats and deadlifts. You'll make all the progress. So that is a couple of the other smaller muscle groups that you want to work on and last but not least we're actually going to go with the traps uh, so a lot of people don't devote all that much work to the traps now uh, first off anyone who's got any sort of significant traps you you know that they uh, devote a good amount of time to uh, power and strength movements. That's just one of the telltale signs along with having good quads and whatnot, for example. Uh, but you want to make sure that you are working the traps in just for a practical sense. Because think about it, the traps tie into the neck. The neck supports 
the head. With weak traps, the head starts to go like that. So that is the start of your posture. Uh, any of you can probably guess a few of the immediate and long-term issues you face if you have bad posture. So again, it's these little things that add up in the long run to create major, major problems. So work on your traps, uh, your front shrugs, rear shrugs, side shrugs. A farmer's walk actually I think is uh, one of the more, most excellent exercises you can do for the traps and for the grip. So you, you kill two birds with one stone and if you start doing farmer's walk with a few hundred pounds or more, well, you'll feel it in the legs too. So um, this is another proponent for doing major body movements, lifts and carries, but that's uh, that's another, another video. So in conclusion, uh, make sure that you devote some time to working the forearms, the calves, the traps, those smaller supporting muscle groups, um, and have that long-term mentality about just your mus your muscle chain of command. Again, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it like that. It's an easy way to remember. You grip it in hand. The forearms engage. The forearms support the wrists and the elbows. That transfers the force to the upper arm, which transfers to the shoulder. The freaking leg bones connected to the hip bone, or however that song goes. So think of it all in a chain of of command that will either operate correctly, in which case you'll be able to do the exercise or the motion efficiently and gain progress from it, or if it has to skip over links, somebody else has to take on that extra burden of command, and that's how a lot of overuse injuries happen. So think of it like that and make sure that you do sweat the small stuff when it comes to the, to the gym.